Day of reckoning, the end of 10 days of terror, and police believe a killer once on the loose is now dead. These images tell the story. The charred foundation, all that's left of a cabin in the woods set ablaze. And police believe that Christopher Dorner was inside. While in another part of Southern California, police gathered to lay one of his victims to rest, one of their own. His widow in a moving embrace by his casket covered with a flag. We begin tonight's coverage with ABC Cecilia Vega now. Cecilia. Diane, good evening. I am standing at the one-time police command post, the heart of that manhunt for Christopher Dorner. And just take a look at this right over my shoulder, those houses right there. We now know that's where Dorner was holed up just as of yesterday. Neighbors telling us he very well may have been hiding in plain sight. From a barrage of gunfire to a rush of flames to that shell of a house, now nothing left but rubble. Shut down the freeway, possibly uh, for the subject we've been looking for. Christopher Dorner's run from the law began to unravel here at this cabin near a ski resort. Police say Dorner broke in and yesterday when two unsuspecting women came by to clean, he allegedly tied them up, took their car and then sped off. One of the women broke free and managed to call the police. Dorner was once again on the run. Chased by police, he abandoned the stolen car. Then up the road, police say Dorner carjacked Rick Heltebreak. Dorner jumped out of the snow at me. Gun drawn, big long rifle. So I just stopped and put my truck in park and put my hands up. He pointed his gun at me and said, I don't want to hurt you. Just get out and start walking up the road and take your dog. Dorner raced off again. This time a fish and game warden spotted him and that officer engaged in a life or death shootout. Dorner realized he had been recognized, rolled down his window, held his pistol out the window and shot at the two wardens in the, in the follow vehicle. Miraculously never hit either of the two wardens who were inside. But police say Dorner did shoot two other officers during his run yesterday, killing 35-year-old Jeremiah McKay, who leaves behind a seven-year-old daughter and four-month-old son. The former Navy reservist then holed himself up in a cabin, and here, in these usually quiet mountains, an intense firefight broke out. Police say they fired tear gas into the cabin. Burning gas, burning gas. Then came the flames. We have fire in the front. He might come out the back. One shot fire from inside the residence. By nightfall, the cabin burned to the ground. And inside, authorities say they discovered a lone charred body. Authorities now turn their attention to forensic tests to positively identify that body. Twelve Los Angeles Police Department families remain under police protective watch, fearful of Dorner's threat to go after them, Diane. And I'm sure that fear will remain until that positive identity on that body comes back. All right, Cecilia, thank you. And I want to bring in ABC Chief Justice Correspondent right now, Pierre Thomas, who's been working the phones to learn more about the power of Dorner's weapons. What have you learned, Pierre? Good evening, Diane. Sources say facing Dorner was like facing a hitman. One source told me police believe Dorner recently bought oxygen tanks used in scuba diving in order to breathe in the event of a tear gas attack. Dorner apparently was dressed for war in combat gear. Remember, he was not only a former cop, but also former military, an expert marksman to boot, his arsenal, an assortment of rifles and possibly explosives. In short, my sources said this man was lethal, Someone they knew going in had a death wish, Diane. And undoubtedly, there's more to come on all of this. Thank you, Pierre. And as we said today, police paid a solemn farewell to one of their own, the first officer killed in the rampage. Dozens of patrol cars leading the procession for the funeral of police officer Michael Crane. Crane was a former Marine, dad to 10-year-old Ian, 4-year-old Caitlin. His wife, Regina, talked about their lives together. It just seemed too good. Everything seemed too perfect. As we said, it was an emotional and solemn ceremony today.